rugged, wild and beautiful. A place full of potential of all kinds. Icelanders get their fair share of bad weather. In fact, this summer has been the worst in a hundred years. But we don't stay inside. We put on the right kick and make the most of every break we get, whether or otherwise. When I was racing, I um, kind of always wished I could explore a bit more. When you travel to all the different places, uh, you don't get that much time to look around. I'm actually studying geology. I think Iceland's one of those places where like the earth dynamics and everything that happens is really visible. So coming here to explore by bike seems like the perfect combination. One of the reasons I've always been interested in Iceland is it has a really progressive attitude towards its use of green energy. As a mountain biker, I wanted to come to Iceland because the terrain looks incredible. Volcanoes and green valleys, massive waterfalls. It was on the bucket list for a long time. After building the bikes, we went to see what riding we could do within half an hour of Reykjavik. We headed straight out to a field of, of lupins, which are these blue flowers you would find in your grandma's uh, garden. So yeah, we're just going to go check out a track that's near the outskirts. And uh, it's pretty cool just outside the city. When you've been through it, you won't know what it's like. You can't see things the same, but you're close enough. Iceland's summer is about six weeks long, uh, so they, they literally flower for about a month. So, and they're like just about handlebar height, perfect for riding through. And the trail kind of snakes through them really subtly, so it's like guessing which way it's going to turn next. Um, so after riding through the lupins, we drove about 20 minutes down the road up to a old volcano crater that had this huge lava channel running out of it. They're all gone now. Did I take too long? Did I ask too much? I didn't love you as much as I could. Evidence is killing me now. I'm starting to see and every now and again you see one lone little feisty flower making it through. <laughs> Iceland has volcanoes erupting once every four years, uh, so the city's built, you know, on this active volcanic landscape, and people are living on it, using it, yeah, surviving in this country. So Iceland's basically using geothermal energy to heat like 90% of its homes and all their industry. And that's all just coming from the ground. same area as the power stations. You can do so much more as well. You can ride there, you can hike there. Um, 
just like what they've got is being used for so many different things. And you're riding down and you can see pipes and boreholes that look like little space invaders and steam rising and there's squealing from the from the steam. So standing on the side of a volcano that we've been riding on that's also delivering 99% of the energy to its capital city was quite poignant. After exploring what was on the outskirts of the city, we then packed up the truck and drove four to five hours up north into the highlands for three more days of riding and exploring. Yeah, we knew Iceland would be impressive, but when you're here, there really is so much to see. Um, like pictures and videos don't really do it justice until you're there. You can literally just keep looking around and seeing something new, new colours, new features. When you're old enough, when you've been through it, you won't know what it's like, you can't see things the same. It's almost like the perfect dirt to ride on, it's kind of sandy and kind of peaty. You could just go for it, but it's also a challenge to kind of stay on the trail. Looking at all that water crashing over it, that's basically how much hot water is going into Reykjavik. It's really cool to see and you can really you know, visualise how much is being produced. and then ride a descent down and then go for a dip in a, another geothermal hot pool. So yeah, the landscape is really special in the highlands. Uh, you do have to be kind of careful when you're riding them, like not blowing up the turns too much and maybe rein it in a little bit. So if the vegetation gets damaged or ridden on or marked, um, it just doesn't grow back. And it seems like they're you know, trying to manage it as well as they can. Gleaming shades of burning brass glide across the sun. Flow to kingdom come. Oh. Radiant beams of fire. I feel like when, when you explore different areas on your bike, there's some places that are about the trail specifically and there's some places where the trail is a vehicle for you to just see incredible landscapes and that day felt like that for me. The way we treat our trails is just putting a microscope on the way we treat our planet as a whole and Iceland is a really good working example of a country that has taken less than 50 years to get to just over 90% clean energy using the resources they have on their doorstep. Exploring Iceland by bike really has been you know, such an adventure. Um, to go to all these different landscapes and places and ride on stuff that you've never ridden on before. And it really does put things into perspective. There's always evidence of like, what the Earth can do. We can't really control it. 
but it's kind of up to us to manage it and live on it as best we can and to respect it. We just feel